Hello students, today we will discuss about DNA probes and PCR. In introduction, a stretch of DNA sequence that can detect a target sequence in the genome is called as probe. Ever since its invent, probes are continuously being improved to advance the utility and to bring about automation in the process of genetic analysis. The development of PCR by Cary Mullis was a turning point in the process that brought about a new group of DNA profiling markers. PCR facilitated the development of marker-based gene tags, variability studies, phylogenetic analysis, map-based cloning of selected genes, marker-assisted selection of desirable genotypes, etc. Although, Initially, these probes were developed and used for genetic engineering research. They are now frequently used for a variety of purposes, including diagnosis of infectious diseases, identification of food contaminants, variety of microbiological tests, and forensic analysis. Probes can also be used to identify different varieties of crop species. For basic studies in molecular biology laboratories, these are frequently used for identification and isolation of genes or related sequences. Now, let us first consider discussing about DNA probes. DNA probes are short sequence of single-stranded DNA used to identify the presence of complementary DNA sequences, also called target sequences, by hybridization. DNA probes are usually labeled with radioisotopes, biotin epitopes, or fluorophores to allow their detection. DNA or RNA probe assays are faster and sensitive so that many conventional diagnostic tests for viruses and bacteria involving culturing of the organisms are being fast replaced by molecular probe assays. Molecular probes can be broadly categorized into DNA probes and RNA probes. Sometimes cDNA probes and synthetic oligonucleotide probes can also be used for various purposes. Let us discuss about preparation of DNA probes. It can be done by cloning. The conventional means of preparation of DNA probes includes extraction of the DNA from an animal or plant tissues digestion of the extracted DNA with a restriction enzyme which cuts DNA at specific sites or positions, separation of the digested DNA by agarose or polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis to sort out fragments of different sizes, isolation of specific fragment from a particular band followed by inserting the DNA fragment into a vector. The recombinant vector is then transformed in a bacterial cell followed by labeling. In another means of generating molecular probes, the synthetic oligonucleotides and PCR amplicons also can be used as probes. DNA probes with known nucleotide sequence can also be synthesized chemically using automated DNA synthesizers. These synthetic probes will be efficient only when they are not more than 2,040 nucleotides in length. Probes can also be synthesized and labeled at the same time using PCR. For the success of DNA probe assay, it is necessary to develop simple, safe, and sensitive technique for their use. As probes transmit no signal of their own, they have to be either labeled with radioactive isotopes or coupling of non-radioactive signal molecules to the probes without impairing the hybridization ability of these probes. These signal molecules can include fluorescent antibodies, enzymes that produce color changes in dyes and chemiluminescent catalysts. Let us look into methods for labeling of probes. There are two methods for labeling of probes, that is, and labeling and NIC translation. 
In end labeling, in this technique, probe is isolated and end labeled by removing the 5' prime terminal phosphate using alkaline phosphate as first and adding a 32P labeled phosphate with the help of a kinase. End label probes are far less efficient than the transcribed ones with labels at several nucleotides in the strand. In NIC translation, it is one of the commonly used techniques for producing a radioactive probe, a purified phage or plasmid vector containing a clone genomic or cDNA sequence is treated with a small amount of pancreatic DNAs which hydrolyzes the phosphodiester bonds between the nucleotides. At very low concentration, the DNAs produces only scattered nicks in one of the other strand of the duplex DNA. Using the unharmed strand as template, the DNA polymerase synthesizes a new second strand using exposed 3' end at a nick site as primer, which then displaces the existing DNA from the 5' end of the nick. Radioactive nucleotides are incorporated into the new strand, so a single standard probe is created when the duplex DNA is denatured. Probes can be labeled either by radioactive isotopes or can also be labeled with non-radioactive molecules such as biotin, dioxygenin, etc. Now, let us discuss about applications of DNA probes. Molecular probes are used in restriction fragment length polymorphism, also referred to as RFLPs, and related analysis. In the first application, the restriction fragment length polymorphism can be studied in a set of related species using a random or specific DNA probe. The similarities and difference can be used to infer phylogenetic relationships. This is applicable in both plants as well as in animals. RFLPs have been used to prepare chromosome maps in humans, mice, fruit fly, and plants, including maize, tomato, lettuce, and rice. RFLPs are used to study the inheritance and linkage relationship and genetic linkage maps in plants and animals. RFLP markers are also used to map the genes in diseased person and identification of disease. DNA polymorphism are differences in DNA sequences that result from point mutations, random deletion, or insertion of the presence of variety of number of repeated copies of a DNA fragment, also known as tandem repeats. Genetic disorders like sickle cell anemia, thalassemia, Huntington's disease and cystic fibrosis can be identified through RFLP mapping analysis which demonstrates power of RFLP or linkage analysis. In another application, use of molecular probes in molecular cytogenetics. Specific molecular probes can be used for isolation of specific genes. These probes may be available either from same species or from another species can be used for isolation of genes. If probes obtained from one species is used for isolation of gene from the same species, they are called as homologous probes. If probes obtained from another species used for isolation of genes in other species, they are defined as heterologous probes. These heterologous probes have been found to be effective in identifying gene clones during colony hybridization or plaque hybridization or on southern blots. In situ hybridization is a technique which permits detection of DNA or RNA sequence in cell smears, tissue sections, and metaphase chromosome spreads. The method is based on formation of double-stranded hybrid molecule which form between the DNA or RNA target sequence and the probe. Molecular probes also can be used in healthcare. DNA probes are being extensively utilized for diagnosis of disease caused by parasitic protozoa and helmins. They are also used for antenatal diagnosis of congenital diseases to allow advice on abortion of fetus. If desired, similarly, 
Probes have been designed for the diagnosis of number of sexually transmitted diseases. Ready-made DNA probes for herpes virus and other human, animal, plant viruses are available. Probes are also available for a number of human parasites from the groups protozoa and helminths. Molecular probes also can be used in DNA fingerprinting. DNA fingerprinting is a way of identifying a specific individual. DNA fingerprinting is currently used both for identifying paternity or maternity and for identifying criminals or victims. Now let us discuss about polymerase chain reaction, also known as PCR. PCR is a revolutionary method developed by Carrie Mullis in the 1980s. PCR is based on using the ability of DNA polymerase to synthesize new strand of DNA complementary to the offered template strand. Because DNA polymerase can add a nucleotide only onto a pre-existing 3'OH group, it needs a primer to which it can add the first nucleotide. This requirement makes it possible to delineate a specific region of template sequence that the researcher wants to amplify. At the end of the PCR reaction, the specific sequence will be accumulated in terms of billions of copies, also known as amplicons. In order to understand PCR, let us discuss about the components of PCR. First, the DNA template, the sample DNA that contains the target sequence is known as a template. DNA polymerase, a type of enzyme that synthesizes new strand of DNA complementary to the target sequence. The first and most commonly used of this enzyme is the TEC DNA polymerase from Thermus aquaticus, whereas PFU DNA polymerase from Pyrococcus furiosus is used widely because of its higher fidelity when copying DNA. Although these enzymes are subtly different, they both have two capabilities that makes them suitable for PCR. The first one is they can generate new strands of DNA using a DNA template and primers and the second is they are heat resistant. Another component is the primer. Primers are short pieces of single stranded DNA that are complementary to the target sequence. The polymerase begins synthesizing new DNA from the end of the primers. Another component is the nucleotides or DNTPs or deoxynucleotide triphosphates. These are single units of the bases A, T, G and C which are essentially the building blocks for new DNA strands. Let us talk about steps in PCR reaction. In the first step, known as denaturation, double-stranded template DNA is heated to separate it into two single strands. In the second step called the annealing, temperature is lowered to enable the DNA primers to anneal to the template DNA. In the third step called the extension, the temperature is optimized for the polymerase to synthesize new strand of DNA, which is met by the TAC polymerase enzyme. These three steps are repeated 20 to 40 times, doubling the number of DNA copies each time, leading to production of millions of amplicons in a short duration. In the applications of PCR, PCR has found a wide range of application due to its versatility. The technique is used in genotyping, forensics, cloning, microarrays, mutation detection, sequencing and paternity testing. In conclusion, since PCR and molecular probes assays are very sensitive methods, their use has become today's most sophisticated and sensitive technology for a variety of uses involving biological systems, both in basic and applied studies. They give new dimensions to concerted effort of breeding and marker edit selection and can reduce the time span of developing new and better varieties and will make the dream of super varieties 
come through.